This is my Grandpa Jack. He came to this country in the early 1900s on a cattle boat from Russia with nothing. He landed in Boston, he worked in a tannery, and then he started his own shop. And in the back of the shop, he put two machines and he started to make ladies' stockings. <laughs> Through two world wars, the Great Depression, and the transformation to pantyhose, Grandpa Jack built a business that provided not only for his family and his extended family, but created hundreds of jobs all across New England and the South. Now, I spent a lot of time with Grandpa Jack when I was growing up, and he used to say to me, you can go work for somebody else, but it's much better if you start your own business. Grandpa Jack is the story of the American dream. You know, people have come to this country for centuries, and they have found the opportunity to start and grow businesses and to prosper. Now, some of these businesses are like the Frontier Cafe. They are our Main Street businesses. They start small, they stay small, and they're really the fabric of our daily lives. They're the dry cleaners, the car repair operations, and they are our community. Now, there are other businesses that transform their entire markets, and they grow quite big, they become household names, and they create thousands of jobs. Entrepreneurship is America's secret sauce. So I did what Grandpa Jack suggested, and I spent my life starting and growing and worrying about small businesses, because small businesses are really the engine of the whole American economy. How many of you out there are small business owners? Raise your hand. And how many would like to be? Well, half, <laughs> half the people who work in this country own or work for a small business. That's half the jobs. And two out of every three net new jobs come from small business. So this is our economy, and you are our economy. Small business owners like you work hard every day, right? You get up every morning, you tend to customers, you buy inventory, and you try to get enough money to make ends meet. Because if small business is the backbone of America, cash is the lifeblood of small business. Now, six years ago, right about this time, the cash situation in this country for small business was very bad. In fact, in December 2008, credit markets froze. And even if you were a strong small business, you might have had your credit line pulled. At that very time, I went to work for the President of the United States as a member of his cabinet and as the head of the U.S. Small Business Administration. That meant I was the person responsible in the federal government for America's small business owners. It was a pretty dire time. And I'm happy to say that we took some uh, really aggressive action to unfreeze the credit market. And for the last three years, the SBA has put a record level of loans, $30 billion a year, into the hands of small business owners. Thank you. But the recession is slowly going away, and the recovery is slow and bumpy for small business owners, and actually for many Americans. Well, large businesses have prospered, and the stock market got to new highs. It has been really difficult for most Americans. In fact, about half Americans believe that the American dream, Jack, Grandpa Jack's story, is not available to them. And many of them think, many of you might think that your children might not be as well off even as you are. I'm now at the Harvard Business School, as you heard, and we just published a report on the state of small business lending. And I have to say, some of the conclusions are quite troubling. 
There is a gap in access to credit for small business owners, and particularly in loans of about $50,000, which is about the level that most small businesses want. Small businesses go from bank to bank, and they fill out a mountain of paperwork, and they can't get a loan. Maybe it's because small business lending hasn't changed much in about 100 years. People are still going to get small business loans from a bank just the way Grandpa Jack did when he sat down with Mr. Gray and Mr. White. And that, those actually were their names. <laughs> and asked for a loan. Maybe it's because it's not economical anymore to have these relationships with a borrower for a loan of $50,000. But right now, something is changing. Something new is happening. Technology is entering the picture. Some entrepreneurs, otherwise known as mavericks and misfits, are entering the market, and they're actually coming into this market by the dozens. So, what are they doing? Online lending. How does it work? If you're a small business owner, instead of filling out a mountain of paperwork, you fill out the forms online. And then if you give your permission, you can let them electronically access your bank records, your credit account records, and using big data and algorithms, they can give you an answer on your loan within hours, even minutes. And the money can be in your account within days instead of months. Sounds pretty good, right? Right? Yeah. Sounds good? And it is, but one note of caution. The new marketplace for online lending is kind of like the Wild West. There's a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of risk. So it's just not very transparent. If you are a small business owner and you are going to get a line, a, a bank loan from one of these online lenders, make sure you know how much you are paying. Still, this is a moment of opportunity because if we can close the credit gap, if, if we can get more cash into the hands of successful small business owners like you all, you can do what you do best. Grow the business, create jobs. And we can reawaken the American dream and let people have more access to Grandpa Jack's experience. Come with nothing, start, grow a business, create jobs, grow the American economy, because in this country, we know that when small businesses succeed, America will succeed. Thank you.